Bagger Racing League had stop number two and three in Milwaukee, and they knew that the championship round was gonna be the one that really set the tone. So where do you go to do that? The Sunshine State in Daytona. We find ourselves at the World Center of Racing, Daytona Speedway. Daytona Speedway, what an iconic venue. Bagger Racing League Championship round number four. We're handing out the hardware today. This is the Drag Specialties Battle of the Baggers presented by Custom Dynamics. And we have all six of our exciting classes down here at Daytona International Speedway. Cobra ATU is the first class that's gonna take the track. And this is a Run What You Brung American Twins Unlimited class from Baggers to Liquid Cool Bikes to some of the big twins. We have a little something for everybody. Let's look at the lineup down there now. Fernandez, Parker, Bray Miller, Cowan, Dylan Wall always putting in hard work, and Benny Carlson on the Suburban Harley Davidson. The grid lined up and we're underway, and right away as the liquid cooled bikes off front. Josh Baird grabs the whole shot. Benny Carlson goes to the outside, but the alloy art ride of Corey Cowan comes up the inside. Never count out the saddleman. Lloyd's garage ride of Patricia Fernandez. Cowan makes quick work of Benny Carlson. Sets up Josh Baird. Baird on the Lloyd's garage. Saddleman Indian. Benny Carlson on the suburban Harley Davidson. Talked about Carlson, but Baird's out front. Corey Cowan has a great drive. Now watch Corey Cowan up here on the high bank. The alloy art ride jumps into the draft. He sits back in the number three spot for the moment, but not for long as Corey Cowan comes around Benny Carlson and has his sights set on Josh Baird. Cowan now up to the number one spot, but Benny Carlson has a completely different game plan as they come back down to the infield and head one more time up onto the high banking. The Suburban Pan American. Carlson on the high banks looking for a way around Baird. The Suburban Harley Davidson Pan American is going to thread the needle. Corey Cowan on the Alloy Yard Pan American out front. Carlson around Baird. Drops down one more position and goes right by Corey Cowan on the Suburban Pan American. Benny Carlson to the lead in Daytona. Carlson then started to move away from the rest of the pack as Josh Baird settled into the number two spot. Carlson throttled to the stop, 126 horsepower of Pan American Harley Davidson. And down the final time to the checkered flag here in Daytona as Benny Carlson picks up the Cobra ATU win. Podium, Carlson, Baird, and Cowan. Now let's go down to the podium here and Kristen Banks. I'm down here with our ATU champion, Benny Carlson. Benny, you and Josh Baird just had quite the battle out there, but you ended up on top of the podium. How'd you successfully do that? Yeah, it was just uh, just kind of waiting for the right time. At Daytona, it's always tricky. You can really lose a ton of time in the infield, so just kind of hanging loose and uh, you know, kind of getting my, my deal sorted out for the banking. And uh, So that's kind of how we did it. We just kind of slow played uh, the first lap there. Those guys were a little more aggressive than I wanted to be, and uh, we ended up with the win, so that's all that matters. Well, congratulations on your first place. We look forward to seeing you later in some other races. Thanks a lot, Kristen. Now it is the Saddleman FS Cup. We talk about them all the time, liquid cool technology, FTRs against Pan Americans. We have some of the best in the business out there. West, Fernandez, Carlson, Baird, Cowan. This is going to be a really good one. A lot of them on Bridgestone tires and the green flag is up. And Corey West, a great starter on the FTR, the Saddleman. Lloyd's garage ride goes to the front. 
Benny Carlson on the suburban Pan American tucks right in. And these two have had some great battles. Josh Baird also on the uh, Lloyd's Garage. Uh, Indian back in the number three spot. Behind him, Corey Cowan on the Alloy Art Pan American. Through the infield before they head up to the banks, it was Corey West trying to get through that gearbox on that FTR Indian. And opens up about a two or three bike length advantage over Benny Carlson on the Suburban Pan American. 1,250 cc, 17 inch rims, upside down fork, single shock, and some of the best bikes that Harley Davidson and Indian make are in this Saddleman FS Cup. And Corey West, Carlson, Josh Baird, Corey Cowan, Patricia Fernandez, Dustin Slater, some of the names we see out there, but up at the front of the grid, up onto the banking, it's Corey West trying to break away from Benny Carlson. Josh Baird on the FTR Indian from Lloyd's Garage, and Saddleman holds on to the number three spot, but Corey West has found the hot line around Daytona. Off the banking, around the lap riders, you see all the top four come into view. Corey West, number 13, is your leader. Sits up, catches some wind, drops the knee to the infield. Betty Carlson can only watch as Corey West puts the power of that FTR to the ground, streaks his way towards the checkered flag here in Daytona, and Corey West picks up the win. West, Carlson, Baird, Cowan, Fernandez, and Slade. Now let's go to the podium and Kristen Banks. I'm down here with your Saddleman FS Cup champion, Corey West. Corey, you started on pole and you stayed out front the entire time. How did you make it look so easy? Oh, we just have a good package. Uh, the Indian FTR 1200 works awesome. Uh, Saddleman gave me a great bike. Indian and Charlotte, Lloyd's Garage, Mission Foods, Motul. Everybody that's been a part of this program all year has really stepped up and it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, kind of bummed we didn't go the four for four sweep at, you know, Milwaukee was our only second place this year, but I always get along with Daytona, and we made it work this weekend, so it was really fun. Well, congratulations on a great finish here and a great finish to this whole FS Cup. Podiums, championship points, and the number one plates are what they're racing for. The BRL on MAV TV will be back with our championship rounds in just a moment. Coverage of the BRL on MAV TV is presented by Drag Specialties, Custom Dynamics, and Icon. Rob Bytus in the Shineworks Studio, Daytona. Stop number four of the Bagger Racing League, and this is the Metzler Pro Stock Bagger class. Some of the best in the business. They get ready to take these road glides, street glides, and Indians up on the high banks. A lot of great names, a lot of great sponsors out there. Arnie Wells has been the cream of the field, and Arnie Wells grabs the whole shot on number 69, Grand Teton Ride. In the La Para turn one, Gunner Olet on the turbocharged Trask Road Glide. We go on board with Gunner right now. He gives you a look at what it's like here in the Bagger Racing League in the Metzler Pro Stock class. Arnie Wells out front. Arnie Wells starting this race has essentially wrapped up the championship. And Arnie Wells on the Grand Teton Road Glide tries to pull away from Gunner Olet on the Trask Turbo. Problem is, turbochargers, well, they like to build speed in a big track like Daytona. Gunner has found a way to get that machine up on boost, and he closes up on Arnie Wells, 69, and the number 86 machine. Dual FTRs, one turbocharged, one naturally aspirated. One more left turn, and they'll be up on the high banks. These will be baggers on the high banks in Daytona. Arnie Wells leads them on to the high banks of Daytona with Gunner Olette in the number two spot. But for how long? The boost comes up. We're in hyperdrive. And down on the bottom of the track goes Gunner Olette into the lead in the Metzler Pro Stock Bagger class. Arnie Wells back to the number two spot. And the gap immediately opens. They come down the long back straight of Daytona. 
Going to set up to tip to the infield. Gunner tips it in nice. Looks like Arnie's on the brakes a little harder. Off into the grass and back onto the racetrack goes Arnie Wells. The pack swarming behind him. Back to the Trask Turbo Cam. On the high banks, Gunner Olette has opened up a giant lead in the Metzler Pro Stock Bagger class. And Gunner Olette on the Trask Turbo comes down to take the checkers in Daytona. Olette, Revis on the Bassani ride, and Steve Chamberlain round out the podium in Metzler Pro Stock. Let's go to Kristen Banks. I'm down here with your Metzler Pro Stock champion, Gunner Willett. Gunner, this is the first weekend that you actually have gotten your bike out for practice and qualifying, and look here. You are standing on top of the podium in Daytona. How does that feel? It feels absolutely amazing. I'm so happy to be out here. Got some practice laps in to actually feel the bike and see what it's going to do. That turbo was just absolutely awesome. So reliable. The power was there the whole time. Oh, I can't thank them enough, the boys from Trask, Brian, Nick. It was absolutely awesome, and Pirelli. Now, after seeing that race, everyone wants more of the Cougar Killer. Will we be seeing you next year racing? Oh, yeah, you'll be seeing me next year, hopefully. That's the goal. Yeah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations on your championship. Well, the Icon Lightweight Twins and the NAMS Big Twins are going to do double battle here in this next round of the Drag Specialties Battle of the Baggers from Daytona. You look at the lineup, Cody Melton has an opportunity for the championship. Dylan Wall always a threat. Cody Gilmore has been really fast. Condit got more horsepower, and here we are, Nam's Big Twins, the first one off the line. Parker and Condit nail the whole shot. Patricia Fernandez is gonna try to come up the inside on that Saddleman Lloyd's garage ride, but Charles Condit on the Lindahl Big Twin putting some power to the ground, but out front, Robert Parker. Fernandez makes quick work of Condit. Condit's gonna be a scrapper, though. He's gonna try to battle back. Back down to the infield they go, and Robert Parker is your leader in the NAMS Big Twin class. Bishop Fernandez on that Saddleman Lloyd's Garage Indian Chief. Head down, elbows tucked in, chin on the tank, and closes up. Robert Parker sacrifices the lead to Patricia Fernandez. Fernandez now has only one goal and she's gonna try to break away from this pack as quick as she can. She's in the NAMS big twin class. NAMS one of the leaders in all the electrical components these race bikes need. Up onto the banking, Patricia Fernandez goes. Robert Parker tucked in behind her. Charles Condit into the number three spot. Nam's big twin and icon lightweight twins share in the track right now, but it's all Patricia Fernandez out front with Robert Parker holding on to the number two spot. Charles Condit back in third. Down the back straight, you can see Fernandez on that Indian Chief, really putting the power to the ground. Robert Parker, though, starting to keep her pretty close. He's been one of the pioneers in his Harley racing, been making a trip up to Blackhawk Farms for many years, but Patricia Fernandez, in and out of that back section is gonna head back up onto the banking one more time. Condit still into the number three spot. Parker in second, but Fernandez has opened up an almost insurmountable lead in the NAMS big twin class. Back off the banking as she roars down towards the checkered flag here in Daytona. Patricia Fernandez about to pick up the win in the NAMS big twin class. But we're not done yet on the track. Battles rage on in the Icon Lightweight Twin, and it's Cody Gilmore ahead of Dylan Wall. Dylan Wall, number 519, Cody Gilmore, 374. Gilmore on the Suburban Harley Davidson. The 519 of Dylan Wall comes through. He's Sportster mounted. One of the brightest bikes out on the track is the 519 of Dylan Wall, and Wall heads up and finishes in the number two spot. Ken McAdam, the Canadian, rounds out the uh, number three spot, and Cody Melton picks up the championship. I'm down here with your icon, lightweight twin champion, Cody Gildmore. Cody, in Milwaukee, you had a first place, but then you also had a 
little bit of something happening on the last lap. How does it feel to come back here in Daytona and be on top of the podium? Yeah, it feels awesome. You know, it's a good time whenever you can get back out and let go of the pass. And yeah, I, I had a little mishap and washed the front end with uh, about two corners to go on the last lap while leading in Milwaukee. So that was a little bit in my head flying here today or this weekend, but uh, I just had to let, let it go and try to get back out on the bike and remember what I knew how to do and go out there and have fun, you know? Is there anyone you want to thank that have helped you get this far? Most definitely, yeah. Suburban HD, they've been a huge help. They have an awesome team and thank you to them for bringing me out here. Uh, Sly Fox, Bridgestone, Icon had me looking good. Appreciate them. Drag Specialties, you know, uh, everyone that helped us get here, I appreciate it. Well, congratulations on your first place finish in the lightweight twin class. Great job, Cody Gilmore, but let's head back down to the podium because Kristen Banks is talking to Patricia Fernandez. I'm down here with Patricia Fernandez, your NAMS Big Twin champion and also the number one plate holder for this year. Patricia, how did you get it done out there? I just big effort to all my team, the Rolling Sands and Saddleman team, Lloyd's Garage, Indian of Charlotte, St. Paul. Bridgestone is here awesome, like giving me so much support and everyone that helps us race, whatever we do. I mean, without everyone's support, we couldn't do it. And also the guys on the track giving me a hard time, motivating me. So it was pretty awesome. Now you do have another race coming up, the Bagger GP, and you're not on your normal bike. How are you feeling comfortable before you're going out there? I'm not 100% comfortable on the road glide like I was the Indian Challenger. Me and her had a relationship. I spent a lot more time with her. Still feel like I'm on a first date with this one, but women are smart, women are tough, so I'll figure it out. Bagger racing is more about who's going to finish, make it to the end, so I'm going to see that checker flag. All right, well, y'all stay tuned and watch Patricia in the next race coming up. Congratulations, Patricia, the BRL. Here on MAV TV, we take a break, and when we come back, more championships, more action. Man, don't leave your seat. Coverage of the BRL on MAV TV provided by Metzler, Icon, Custom Dynamics, Drag Specialties, and of course our friends from Clockworks. Back live in the Shineworks studio, you see they're working feverishly on the trash bike. Let's go down to Kristen Banks and find out if they're even gonna make the grid. I'm down here with Shane Narbone, your defending bagger GP champion, and he currently leads the points right now. Shane, yesterday during qualifying on the first lap, you had bike issues, and we are currently standing in front of your bike, and it looks like you're still having issues. How do you prepare for a race not knowing if you're even going to be out there or not? Yeah, of course, we had some issues yesterday, but uh, the good thing is we were still the fastest guy yesterday, so that's good. Uh, but going into today, you know, the boys are working hard, you can tell. So um, I have faith in them, and, and that's what's keeping me going here. You know, I, I wouldn't be on this team if I didn't believe in them. So uh, we're going to get out there and uh, do what we do. Well, Shane's ready to go. They're working on the bike down there to get the uh, Custom Dynamics Bagger GP Defending Champions bike up on the grid. And here's a look at that grid. And there is some talent out there in his final race ever, Michael Barnes. There's the green flag, and Benny Carlson jumps to a big lead. Michael Barnes really fast on the Hoban Brothers Bracing Road Glide. Eslick, for the moment, sticks it out front. Shane Narbone in the pack as well. And this one is going to be wild. We're on board right now with the Trask Turbo. You see right in front of him, Benny Carlson on the Sly Glide. There's Corey West, number 13. Corey West is on the Indian, backed by Saddleman and Lloyd's Garage. But out front, Danny Eslick and Michael Barnes. Eslick on the Nawaski suspension ride. Barnes on the Hoban Brothers Road Glide. Nawaski suspension leads with Danny Eslick at the controls, Michael Barnes in his final appearance, and we couldn't be happier. He decided to end his illustrious career here with the Bagger Racing. He was the first Harley to ever beat a Har an Indian heads up, and he did that a couple years ago in Utah. You see the battle shaping up as we're on board with Trask right now. Eslick on the high side, Michael Barnes down on the low side, and we start to see the Trask turbo kick in as Shane Narbone first around Corey West. Now it's the slide glide of Benny Carlson 
but down the back straight, Eslick and Barnes trying to figure this one out. They drop out of the formation, the draft as they're side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and fairing to fairing. Off of the bank, kick down to the infield. It is Michael Barnes now ahead of Danny Eslick. Narbone's gonna try to go around Eslick and does on the banking, the turbo up on full boost. Michael Barnes, you see a little wiggle coming out of that bike down the straightaway, over 165 miles an hour. These Harley Davidson road glides were going. The turbocharged bike on the outside, as you can see, they're still shoulder to shoulder, fairing to fairing and bag to bag, down into La Pera, turn number one. Essex gonna try to poke up the inside on the Nawaski road glide and a look over his shoulder from Michael Barnes. A handful of throttle on that Hoban bike and the Trask Turbo goes one more time into the lead. Michael Barnes isn't gonna go down like that as he's gonna drop back into the draft. Slingshot one more time and try to get around Shane Narbone coming back down towards the checker flag line. One more lap in the books and Michael Barnes leads here in Daytona. On board with the Trask Turbo of Shane Narbone. Narbone's gonna have to recalibrate, reset, and go back after Michael Barnes. Another quick right-hander. You see the number one plate that Narbone was able to win neck last year. Wants to hold that number one plate through the 2023 season. Michael Barnes wants to wrap up his great career. The Hoban Brothers veteran, he and John Dahmer, worked side by side for a decade or more of racing. And Michael Barnes, one more time, is out front on the Hoban Road Glide. The turbocharged Road Glide of Shane Narbone, though. Nick Trask, the Sturgis Hall of Famer, turned the boost up on this one for Daytona as they head one more time up onto the high banking at the most historic racetrack in all the United States. Up on the banking, two big road glides, over 175 horsepower from these bikes. And this time, the onboard camera lets you see just what the turbocharged bike can do as Barnes drops to the bottom. Looks like he may be having a situation with his shifter. On board now with Nick Trask as he tries to wrap up his second consecutive Bagger Racing League Championship. He's opened a big lead and Shane Narbone on the Trask Turbo not only takes the win in Daytona, but picks up his second consecutive BRL Championship. A wave to the crowd and what a season it's been. Darbone, Eslick, West, Barnes, Fernandez, Brian Shields, and Ben Carlson. I'm down here with your Custom Dynamics Bagger GP champion, Shane Narbone. Shane, earlier today I was interviewing you. Your bike was not even put together, but you're so confident in your Trask team getting it ready to be on the track for this race. Where does that confidence come from? I mean, biggest thing is uh, the, the team is like a family. You know, they work their butt off. Uh, getting this thing together and uh, everyone back home at the shop they they work just as hard they're just not here to show it so uh, it's just that really the family part of it and the friend part of it so uh, I'm honored to ride one of their bikes and uh, it was a good day for sure. Now you're also going to be taking home the number one plate how does it feel to be the two-time Custom Dynamics Bagger GP champion? Oh it feels great of course uh, that that was our main goal today and uh, we wanted to go a little bit faster, but uh, it, in the end game, we won the championship and we get the defendant number one, so that's even better. Well, congratulations on a great finish to the year. The number one plates get handed out. The hands are shaking. The pride, the beam, everybody's excited. That's a wrap of the Bagger Racing League in 2022 from Daytona.